Welcome everyone to this worship service of MCC Sacred Journey. I'm Reverend Joan Sandick, the pastor, and I'm glad that you're with us virtually, uh, whether it's live or whether you're watching this later. We're glad to have you share in worship with us this evening. Let's begin with our opening song, I've Got Peace Like a River. I invite you to rise as you're able in body, mind, or spirit, and join in singing boldly. Uh, we'll sing verses one, two, and three. The words will be on the screen, and we'll get the music here in just a second. Mm -hmm. 
begin our worship this evening, we are in the presence of God. And if we are with God, then we all must be one with each other. So I invite us at the beginning to share a sign of God's peace. May God's peace be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with anyone else you might be with. And if you have a candle, I invite you to light it now as a recognition that we are in God's presence in sacred space and time. God gathers us as a beachcomber gathers and marvels at every precious surviving piece of beach grass she finds. We are never alone. We are never lost to the one who seeks humanity's wholeness. We affirm our commitment today to be the body of Christ that knows we cannot be personally healed, 
until we see the interconnected community as part of the process of healing. Jesus has the power to revision the family of God in which false boundaries are overcome. Please join in singing. Will you please join me in an attitude of prayer? Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, and renew our holy vessels, which include the communities of which we are a part. Let us pray. God of all, you created us for each other. You set in us a yearning for companionship and an empathy that binds us together, protecting each other and delighting in one another. Yet too often, we have broken down our relationships instead of building them up. We have been set against one another with the lie of scarcity. We have built systems and economic and economies that widen the gap of resources rather than safeguarding equitable practices. Too many and growing numbers are suffering hardship, food insecurity, joblessness. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss and so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us healer. Show us our empathy. Forgive our complacence. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness.
So I invite you to imagine a warmth. Imagine a warmth begin to arise within the core of your body. It may help to keep your eyes closed. This warm orb of light is deep within you. A flame, always there and ready when you need it. The warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being to fill and flood your whole body until your skin is glowing with it, radiating outward. This warmth that wraps you as a blanket of assurance is one that you want to share. You want all to feel this presence, to kindle this hope. Know this, this love and security is meant for all people, no matter what. We are capable of sharing our light and not running out of enough. Christ's hospitality that broke through false boundaries points the way for you, for me, and for all. So now take a deep breath to let this truth fill you and breathe out with joy and the relief of assurance. Amen. I invite Jenny now to read the scriptures for us. The first reading, a modern word, is from Mother Teresa of Kolkata. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. The second reading from the ancient word, Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Sir, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Sir, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven while the heirs of the kingdom of heaven will be thrown into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. Amen, thank you. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we thank you for this opportunity to gather virtually in your presence. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, and together might we discover your word and your wisdom for us right here, right now. Amen. So tonight I want to take uh, a look at this story, kind of take it apart a little bit, talk about what a big deal it is for Jesus to help out this centurion. To ask ourselves, how are we doing at reaching out to those in need of God's care and what might be stopping us? But let's start with Jesus. Jesus says, I will go and heal your servant. He's willing to go where someone has a need. 
Well, after all, he has a mobile ministry, amen? His ministry is not based on or based in four sanctified walls and the sanctified space in between them. He is that sanctified space where people meet God. His disciples are that sanctified space. And Jesus and his disciples are the equipment of the ministry. If their feet will take them, they will go wherever there's a need for them to go. The centurion in this story is bold enough to ask Jesus for a favor that he desperately needs. This is a big deal. He humbles himself before Jesus. The Greek word um, that, um, that I translated sir in tonight's reading um, is the word, same word that's uh, more frequently translated Lord, Kyrios. And it can mean either Lord or Sir, uh, but it's a way of addressing somebody who is socially superior to oneself. So here comes this Roman walking up to the Jewish holy man saying, Sir, humbling himself and saying, I need something. Now it could be socially awkward for him to have this Jewish holy man come into his home. It could be socially awkward for the centurion and it could be socially awkward for Jesus. But if the centurion's up for it, Jesus is willing to go. And the centurion says, no, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I don't need you to come to my house. Besides, I know you don't need to. Think of the Godfather movies. You know, you've, you've heard of them if you haven't seen them all, right? Um, the Godfather does things for people. And in return, the Godfather will eventually want a favor. This is very much the system in which, by which things worked in Jesus' day. People who were powerful gave favors and expected favors in return. So the centurion is going to Jesus like someone goes to the Godfather. So if you need something, you don't ask the Godfather to come to your house. Amen. You go to the Godfather. And it would be very rare for the Godfather to take care of it personally. Amen. The Godfather has people he can send. And the Godfather will do that. So it seems Jesus is pleasantly surprised to get this treatment from the centurion. But it's true. Jesus can heal without physically touching someone. He can command that the healing be done. And the centurion believes that. And so it is. The point in all this exchange, though, is Jesus was willing to go and help a foreigner. Not only a foreigner, but someone who would have been an adversary. One commentary says that it's most likely the centurion was a retired um, official, a retired soldier, because Galilee was not a place where uh, the Romans were stationing troops in that time. Uh, they were stationed elsewhere in the land of Israel, but not in Galilee. But even so, um, this guy was not somebody that Jews would think of as a friend. He was not part of their people. He was an adversary. And this adversary asks Jesus very politely and humbly, for help that he needed badly. And Jesus says, okay. Showing us that everyone, everyone is within range of God's care, of God's safekeeping. So what does that mean for us? For we who are Jesus' disciples, who are the people tasked with being Jesus here and now, are we able to reach out? And what stops us? 
let's start with the beginning. How are we doing at reaching out to those who are in need of God's care with or without physically leaving our homes? Well, I want to thank you for continuing to do a great job in support of Interfaith Assistance Ministry. Uh, thank you, Ginny, for making sure that ministry continues. And I want to thank you all for your generosity in helping out our neighbors who are in need. And I want to thank you for looking after each other. I know y'all are doing it. I know y'all are reaching out, keeping people from being isolated and making sure that we know folks are okay and that they have what they need. Are there others who are in need of God's care? Are there others who are isolated? Maybe there are ways we can reach out to others as well. And I pray that we'll keep our spirits open to that call. There are other ways in which our community needs our care right now. And one of those is financial. There are lots of people having financial difficulties. Interfaith Assistance Ministry looks after some of those needs. But there are other ways we can help people out financially. We can send work their way, right? We can, some of us have the ability to hire other folks to do work for us, amen? We can pay them a fair wage. None of this $7.25 an hour business that was a living wage a long time ago. It's not anymore. Amen. It would take at least $12 an hour or 12 and change to make up for the purchasing power of $7.25 back when that was first the minimum wage. So $15 is better, you know? A fair wage is important. And if we have the means to pay it, we can. And I think we should. Send work to people who need it, give work to people who need it, and pay them fairly as much as we have the ability to do so. And we can help our local businesses uh, I love the new commercials for Uber Eats that feature Wayne's World. I'm amazed at the makeup that allows uh, these actors to perform the characters that they first introduced 30 years ago. Um, these guys aren't teenagers anymore, uh, but it's a great makeup job. But I love the way that they break in and plug actual mom and pop restaurants, actual independent restaurants that need support. Everybody who's open for business is open for carry out as far as I know. So we can safely get takeout food from some of our local businesses and help keep them above water. I know they'd love to see more business. And it occurs to me that this is the last day of Black History Month. All month long, uh, I've been making sure that we sing some music from the Black church tradition, from the African American tradition. And the music is inspiring and we can return the favor of that inspiration by supporting some of the Black owned businesses in town. In Hendersonville, there's a wonderful bakery and a good soul food restaurant on 7th Avenue East. You know where to find them. They wouldn't mind some of our money and I know they could use it. So let's make sure that when we support local businesses, we yes, support our friends, support those who have a Hendersonville pride sticker in the window, amen, because they're going out on a limb for us and we can return the favor by giving them our, our custom. But look out for everyone who's hurting and see what we can do to help them out. What stops us from reaching out? Well, perhaps it's fear. 
fear of danger. Fear of catching COVID is real. I get it. I know it. I share it. But there are many things we can do safely. Amen. If we go out to do business with people, we can wear masks and we can get contact free pickup at a number of businesses. So giving somebody our business doesn't have to mean exposing ourselves to a crowd full of people who might make us sick. The fear is manageable, the danger is manageable. Or maybe it's fear of failure. Fear that we'll reach out to somebody and they won't want to talk to us or they won't want our help. You know? Guess what? That's always a possibility. But imagine the alternative. What if somebody's waiting to hear a good word from you? So if you're not sure how you'll be received, ask the Holy Spirit to show you, to give you the words, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what to do. And try it. What's the worst that could happen? Worst that could happen is it doesn't work out, but that shouldn't keep you from trying again. And I think for some of us, it might just be failure of imagination that keeps us from reaching out. It's so easy to close in on ourselves, amen. So easy to do that. So I invite us this week to think about ways that we can reach out beyond ourselves, beyond our own cocoons, beyond our own bubbles, and help make our communities healthy, help strengthen, especially economically and emotionally, help strengthen the bonds that keep our town, our community, um, our state even, a community of people who care for each other and who have each other's backs. The words that we heard in this week's healing story were, I will come. So when faced with a request, Jesus makes a move to seek out to come to help one who was previously seen to be outside of the embrace of help. He moves outward to gather in and heal someone who's unlikely to have crossed his path otherwise, showing us that all people are within God's circle of safekeeping. So I invite you to think about, think about the people you might have encountered or heard about in the last few months who are suffering from a lack of support. Is there something we can do to reach out and focus on healing of the parts of our human community that we don't spend time thinking enough about? To what part of our community is the spirit moving us to say, I will come? I invite you also then to shift your thinking to your own need to be cared for. What is it that you need to feel safe? What connections do you need to strengthen in order to heal any isolation you might feel? Because we're all feeling it, amen. We're all feeling it. If you are in need of something, consider this an invitation to let somebody know what you need without feeling embarrassment or shame about it and without assuming that someone else will guess. Jesus invites us always to ask. Ask and you will receive, he said. So I invite you to take a moment to think on this and if you have your piece of beach glass from last week, 
I invite you to consider that. Consider the one to whom each piece of creation is precious. And invite the spirit to live and move in you in a special way. To strengthen your connection to other people and to take a role in making someone else's life safe. And wherever you keep this piece of glass this week, let it be a reminder to you of the one to whom each piece is precious. Will you pray with me, please? God, we're your equipment. Jesus has commissioned us. Help us to ponder this commission and give us the grace to act on it. In your many names we pray, amen. I invite us to take just a moment to ponder in silence. We have an opportunity now to be generous as God is generous, to remember that giving is not something that God needs from us, but it's something that God wants for us. Um, you're certainly welcome to uh, support MCC Sacred Journey, and uh, we're grateful for the offerings and the tithes that keep this ministry going. So thank you for thinking of us. If you're with us for the first time, please don't feel obligated, but I invite you to find some way to make a donation right now, someplace where it will help create community, where it will help mend community, where it will help give relief to people in the community who need relief. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we thank you for the opportunity to share in your generosity by being generous ourselves. I pray for those who are able to give and those who are not able to give and pray that you would bless all of us with the knowledge that you love us and that you care for us just as much as you care for everybody else in the world. Help us to remember that we are all in this together and help us to rejoice in being your community. In Jesus' name and all your many names we pray. Amen. Lily of 
the valley Let your sweet spirit fill our lives Rose of Sharon show us how to grow in beauty in your eyes Jesus you are cherished by the millions we want to be a reflection of your life this for shine on us let your light shine through us
Let's go to God in prayer. Healer of our every ill, especially our malady of separation and fear, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body and mind and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and the grief of our time. As broken pieces scattered and separated, we trust that you are seeking us, gathering us into wholeness, and calling us to join you in the quest. We pray especially for those who've experienced the loss of livelihoods and economic security and are feeling helpless to care for their families. We pray for those whose businesses have gone over or, on the pre or are on the precipice between survival or closure. We pray for those whose disparity of resources has been made even more pronounced during this pandemic. We pray grateful thanks for the efforts of all who have been searching for solutions and have given generously for months of their time and treasure and resources to alleviate the suffering of those they know and those they do not know. We ask for encouragement and passion to continually evaluate how we as a church can help now and into the future. We pray this day for the welfare of all the members and friends of MCC Sacred Journey. I ask us to pray also for my students in Boston who are hurting. We pray for those who are sick that they might recover and be whole and well again. And for all the intentions that we name now or that remain in the silence of our hearts. And I invite us to pray together as Jesus taught us using the words that are on the screen or what other, uh, whatever other words work for you. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the dominion and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Here at MCC Sacred Journey, as in all metropolitan community churches, we celebrate an open communion. What that means, among other things, is... We don't care particularly what it is you believe about this sharing in memory of Jesus. We only know that Jesus said, come. And we believe this table is open to absolutely everyone who wants to be part of it. So I invite you to join me as we sing the story of Jesus' love for us. Thank you. 
in remembrance of me in this bread in remembrance of me drink this cup in remembrance of me Wisdom has baked her bread and poured her wines and the feast of set is set. These are the gifts of God given for the people of God. Let us share in the feast.
closing song is We Are the Church Alive. So I invite you again to rise as you're able in body, mind, and spirit, and join in singing boldly. We are the church alive. We are the church alive, Christ's presence on this earth. We give God spirit, body, and the heart of our new birth. Eyes yielded, open channels for God's descending door. We shout and sing with joy, we bring God's all inclusive love. We are the church alive, the body must be healed. Where strife has bruised and battered us, God's holiness is revealed. Our mission is an urgent one, in strength and health let's end, so that our witness to God's life will shine through every We are the church alive, all praise to God on high. Creator, Savior, Comforter, we Lord and magnify. Your name, Almighty God of love, pray give us life that we may be your church, the church alive for all the So let us go with the blessing of the one who is creator, Christ, and spirit, and more names than we can imagine. Go with confidence that the holy beachcomber is gathering us all for safekeeping, recovering our depth of love for all, and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ear, I will come. And may the spirit hover Move and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. Again, um, thanks to the members and friends of MCC Sacred Journey for your generosity. Uh, this meet week, we have just one meeting. That's Thursday at 11 a.m. Bible study. We'll consider Sarah. And next week, we'll be back here at 5.30, same thing. One other uh, announcement that I'd like to share with you is that we have an outreach ministry opportunity. We need a volunteer who can keep up our webpage. If you're interested, reply to Sacred Journey Pastor at yahoo.com. Thanks again. God bless you and have a great week. Oh.